Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ron Seaver uh, checking in from the National Sports Forum here on a warm summer day in San Diego. I hope wherever you are, you're doing well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. A little bit of a late call this month, uh, but we really appreciate uh, some of you guys, even if, especially if you're out on vacation right now during this July. Uh, but welcome to our monthly webinar. Uh, this month, a new topic for us. We're very excited to be uh, doing something, exploring some new territory here. And as the title says on your screen, enhancing the fan experience through mobile engagement. Enhancing the fan experience through mobile engagement. So each month, for those of you that are first timers on the call, uh, we like to uh, to explore different topics that basically are the kind of things that we'll be talking about at the National Sports Forum coming up this uh, this year. Will be in February. February 12th through 14th, we'll be in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, in fact, one of our guests today is from Minneapolis and one of our hosts, uh, the Minnesota Twins. But just as a quick setup here, uh, man, it wasn't that long ago before mobile apps, you'd say something about mobile apps and people would look at you quizzically. Uh, it went from a nice to have as part of a component for a team, for a sports property, agencies and corporate sponsors, uh, to now it's a must have. Uh, every couple of years, we do a corporate survey in conjunction uh, with Ohio University. Uh, we call it the Corporate and Industry Survey, where it's basically a, a sponsorship analysis. And we saw that, uh, I mean, for years, television was a must-have. They must have television in their packages. Now, what's usurped television has been social and digital media. And a lot of that is, of course, being done through mobile engagement, through apps and things of that nature. So. Uh, these are three people that we've got joining us today that are basically taking their game to a whole new level. Uh, so we're very, very delighted to, to talk about mobile engagement platforms, different ideas and programs, and we'll start that with Brad, but also strategies that are being used by a couple of our team guests here this month uh, and talking about how they're using mobile to enhance their fan experience. Uh, so great topic. We're delighted to have our guests with us here. If you have any questions, uh, the rules are the same. You'll see on your screen box there's a place that says type message here. Uh, each of our presenters will have about 15 minutes, and then we try to save a couple of minutes afterwards uh, for Q&A. If you have any questions and answers, send them that way. Our, our producer, Albi Abalos, who, by the way, it was his birthday yesterday, so if you guys didn't get a chance uh, to send him a birthday greeting, it's not too late. He takes uh, Visa, American Express, MasterCard. But seriously, he does a great job for us putting this together. And he'll field your questions and shoot them over uh, to us so that we can ask them. We've asked our guests to stay with us throughout the hour. Uh, so if you have a question uh, for Brad, but you know it's just after Chris presents, just let us know who the question is for, and we'll go after it. So those are the ground rules. We will record the webinars we do every month. Uh, Albie will be sending out a link to you probably in about a day. Uh, so you can go and click it if there's anything that you missed that you'd like to listen up to uh, or play back for your staff or your boss. Uh, by all means, we encourage you to do that. It will actually also be up on our website. You can see almost two years' worth of, of monthly webinars up there. So we encourage you to take a listen to any of the topics that we have. But let's jump into our topic for today, mobile engagement. Our, our first presenter, we're delighted to be able to, to uh, bring somebody that's been near and dear, a company that's been near and dear to the forum uh, for a number of years. They first started attending uh, the forum back in 2014. And so we're pleased to present Brad Friedman, uh, who is the CEO and founder of FanServe. Give you a little bit of uh, background on FanServe. Those of you who were with us last year uh, at the forum in Portland, you might remember Brad was uh, and FanServe were there as an exhibitor. Uh, and they also, for those of you who, and I still have this on my phone, Brad, I want you to know, is our mobile app, <laughs> our 2016 mobile app. So we are delighted to support the cause, as they say here. Uh, but Brad brings more than 15 years of uh, building digital marketing solutions and strategies to the call today. Uh, he's an entrepreneur, a technologist, and a, a sports fan, first and foremost. Uh, you'll see he's been a California native and an LA Kings fan. I think that's where we first caught wind of you is the work you were doing for the Kings, uh, and certainly a UC Irvine graduate. So uh, he co-founded B3 Connect, which is the uh, was the parent company of FanServe, and it was done to produce the very first supported team-branded mobile applications for NHL and NBA teams, and he'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but with that said, I'd love to turn the floor over to Brad and give us an update on mobile engagement, if you would, please. Yeah, 
thanks, Ron. Thanks for having me, and uh, absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, Alvi, I didn't realize it was your birthday yesterday. I hope, though, um, I, I've got a, a long list of things that I, I've got for you. Uh, I'll follow up with you. Um, and it's funny, uh, you know, Ron, you talk about it wasn't that long ago that um, the apps were sort of a, an exploratory piece of it, and, and now fast forward just, you know, five years or so, and it's become you know, I like to say all engagement is is mobile engagement. Um, we started uh, as, uh, like you mentioned, as B3 Connect, and you know, we built out uh, some of the first NHL and NBA uh, team branded apps, and and we were always focused um, primarily on the uh, monetization front. You know, we thought that this new channel would be something that would be um, you know, a, a new bullet in the chamber for corporate sponsors. Um, you know, we thought that fan engagement was going to be there as part of um, uh, you know the, the rush to mobile, and uh, and it certainly has. And and so you know, I'd like to talk a little bit. Uh, in my presentation will go through um, you know how to capture and and really on the monetization front where we've sort of ended up in terms of. Um, capitalizing on uh, this live event that is sports. And so the, the first slide, if, if you would, Albi, is um, really the reason that we're still in this business uh, today. And if you take a look at the, uh, the chart here, this is, um, this is uh, for, for those of you that don't know, um, we're, we've been doing the Boston Bruins app for the last five seasons. Um, we've started with a number of teams on the NHL front prior to the New Lion and now BAM um, entree into the space. And, and we still work with a, a few NBA teams as well. And, but the, the one thing that has remained constant from the very first apps that we built, when there was no Wi-Fi in the building, when there was no standards for iOS design, um, and when we were still um, thinking about doing BlackBerry apps, uh, this is the one constant, and this is the reason why um, sports matter. This is the reason why sports spends matter. Uh, this is the reason why we do what we do, and this is this correlation between uh, online behavior and fan engagement with the games. And, you know, I think for anybody that's in this space uh, is familiar with the chart like this because um, it's a season-long worth of engagement and uh, all of your spikes correlate uh, with your five-hour window around the game. So uh, typically for a 7 p.m. start, you know, from 5 to 11, that's, uh, that's your prime time. That's 90% of your traffic, and um, that is your bread and butter. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's something that, you know, from a mobile app perspective, uh, again, dating myself, but the first app we built, uh, you know, we had really heavy backgrounds. Uh, it didn't work in venue. I remember the team president walking by nightly going, just with a little bit of a stink eye, <laughs> like, hey, nice app, and, uh, you know, not much that you could do uh, in those days. But at the end of the season, we saw this chart. And we saw this fan engagement, and ever since we've been, you know, chasing um, how to improve upon it, how to drive uh, that engagement further, and and how to capture uh, even more of the fans' attention um, going forward. So, um, Abby, if you don't mind, you know, again, fast forwarding to uh, where we're at today. So you've got a number of different channels as far as social and digital um, to engage. And what we found, again, you know, relating to that chart, was that that fan engagement spiking was around that live content. You know, what's happening, what's unfolding, um, what's going on in the game, and where we're at today uh, doesn't allow us to really capture that engagement. I think you know, the mobile content is there, the social content is there, but for us, it was it now pushing that um, into the into the digital ad stream. And so, you know, again, one of the things that we saw was this inability for brands and sponsors and teams' properties to, to react in real time with the game action. And so um, if you want to look at what we built here on the next slide. So what we've come up with is um, what we, we, is, we think is the first market where we brought in live data feeds. So um, everything that, you know, happens from... Um, you know, NBA to uh, Snookers, uh, we can cover live, bring into ad tech, 
and allow uh, creative and media to be uh, more targeted, game aware, and uh, highly effective in terms of capturing that fan engagement. Um, it's an ad tech solution, and I don't know if anybody knows much about the ad tech side of things. Uh, if you don't, uh, don't worry, you're just missing a bowl of spaghetti that uh, is, is not very tasty. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a still a work in progress, but uh, there are certain standards that, um, you know, that we've conformed to and uh, have built, like I said, the live feeds into so that you can take advantage of targeting and viewability and distribution, delivery, optimization, all of those. If, you, if you've ever seen a Lumascape, uh, all of those buckets that need to be sort of checked off uh, for a digital ad to be uh, displayed and bought, um, we've, we've built our tech around. And so um, what that looks like, if you um, want to look at the next slide here, um, oh, sorry, so <laughs> why we've built that is our, uh, you know, again, we think that uh, because of that fan engagement, it's, uh, it's so important for, in terms of the business, business ecosystem, to capture revenue, um, the brand affinity, and improve performance. And so with better creative, with uh, better targeting in terms of the media, and with something that we call game parting, which is, um, again, just targeting your ad around those events in a game, which you know, oddly enough, you you for as, as unpredictable and chaotic as sports and exciting as sports is, it's also really scheduled. And so, I mean, we know where uh, the Kings are playing on uh, March 30th, and you know, you know, again, where your team's going to be uh, for the season. And, and the teams now um, are planning, obviously, are well into planning uh, their marketing for the season, and so. There's this scheduled aspect that you know it's going to happen. You know there's a beginning. You know there's a middle. You know there's an end. There's going to be a winner and a loser. And so for all of those reasons in terms of, of being able to plan, um, you know, we're looking to drive revenue and uh, increase the, the correlation between that fan excitement and the brand sponsorship. And then, of course, performance is the, is the and I'll be all in digital uh, because it's measured, because every impression is measured. Um, you, know, you certainly have to be able to deliver on the, the performance side of things. Um, and so I think the next slide here will give you a little bit of an example um, in terms of what we're talking about. And so uh, when we talk about live ads, uh, this is actually just one ad unit, um, but it tells a story throughout the game. And so these are obviously different times different periods of the game. And so um, the top banner here is the countdown. Um, and the message here is to you know, get tickets. So it's a, it's a push to tickets um, while leading into the game. Um, and then if you go uh, you know, further down here, uh, we've also got the ability to um, serve ads. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I'll follow along with you. This is, it, the first here, the angel slide here, is, is just looking at, again, um, a lot of what you're, you're doing from um, uh, a publishing standpoint, it's just micro-publishing um, and uh, you know, uh, driving your message and, and driving certain uh, calls to action. So get tickets, sign up for um, the Angels Insider uh, program. Again, just the sample calls to action that you could do during the game, uh, again, while people are engaged to capture their attention. And then also, if you, you want to look at the next slide, there, there's you know, threshold events. There's uh, certain things that happen, um, uh, you know, during the game, again, Steph Curry hitting a three-pointer, um, you know, we know that uh, you can hype that up in terms of promoting him. We know, you know, that he's going to hit a number of them during the game. And then, of course, you know, we can pipe in scores and feeds and um, all of that sort of corporately branded uh, to, you know, drive awareness and, and capitalize on that uh, fan excitement. And then you know, the other part of, of what we've built is the delivery mechanism. And so you know, I think that the difference between uh, when we started working with teams, the, the big difference that I saw right away was um, you know, in how aggressive content distribution can be um, off-platform versus when you're the official um, you know, team property. And so you know, for example, trade deadlines. Um, or uh, you know, rumor mills, but you know, when trades come uh, down the line, uh, teams are probably the last people that get that message out, even though they're, they're the first to know um, 
because of leaks and uh, scoops and um, you know how competitive just media is in general, um, those you know those opportunities to uh, capitalize on the message and the brand message, um, you know, on the team platform really are, are hard to do because of the uh, official nature and the uh, cleansing and uh, scrubbing of the content before it gets live. So. Um, you know the opportunity for us, obviously, to extend off-platform and be aggressive about reaching and retargeting fans again in in the moment of the game um, is really something that uh, you know we think is, is sort of next generation uh, uh, fan engagement, especially on the mobile platform. And then, of course, targeting uh, you know um, all sports are local, and so uh, you know, our product allows us to uh, target locally um, from a national perspective. So you could have a national sponsor, but um, again, from a sports perspective, you know I'm I'm not a fan of the NHL, I'm a, or you know I'm a fan of the Kings. So it's uh, it's really about capitalizing on your market, and um, you know I think that there are a number of nuances. Per market that um, you were looking to, obviously from a creative perspective, allow brands and teams to to capitalize on, so that your voice and the story that you tell is obviously unique to your to your product and your properties. And uh, again, just you know, from a targeting perspective, you know, I think everything that you do from a mobile capability should be, uh, you, you know. The geofence is so important, and because you can get down to just targeting around your arena, um, all the way out to whatever you know your league's primary market area is, it, that varies obviously from uh, league to league and, and team to team. But um, you know, if you're not considering the geo targeting, I think that that's one of those um, must-haves now uh, in terms of mobile content distribution. And uh, and that. That wraps it up. That's uh, again, we're really excited about the, uh, you know, capitalizing on this the real time element. I think you know is the key here. Uh, no matter what you're doing on the mobile platform, but you know, if if you're not, um, if you you know, if you're thinking about canned messages, if you're thinking about static content, um, I think that that's always going to be uh, a challenge and take a, a back seat to what happens live and what happens now. And um, you know that's whether it's social, or um, the live score, the live stream, or you know messaging, telling the story with the game. Uh, I think that those are, are your best assets and um, unique, most unique assets. And those are the ones that, on the mobile platform, you know, as far as engagement goes, need to be capitalized on. So, Brad, great, great recap. Thank you so much. Especially, you know, the the geo targeting that you're doing. Uh, you use the Washington Capitals as an example. Uh, all the way down to in a stadium, in arena, uh, on track type of uh, engagement. Uh, beacons, do you work, do you interact? How, how do you interact with beacons? Are you seeing that still growing, uh, becoming a, a mainstay uh, in the particular, and anything you can address about how addressable they are instantaneously uh, throughout the stadiums and arenas uh, through methods like beacons? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the Beacons are one of those uh, technology advancements that we're so, I mean, there's so much excitement around it and with good reason. Um, but I think that the, the practicality and given you know, the structure of the arenas, uh, the resources that are available, you know, to really take advantage of, of you know, what the beacon uh, has to offer is, is really, um, I think, still being worked out, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, you know, I think that um, we're getting closer to maybe an 80-20 rule and, and how to effectively use those, um, you know, within the arena, uh, certainly from a data aspect and, um, you know, fan tracking, um, uh, you know, I think that it's, um, you know, it's well ahead of its time. I think that there's still potential in terms of, you know, if you look at, uh, with Pokemon Go, what it's done for uh, augmented reality. You know, augmented sure. reality has been around for for uh, since they had uh, since the phones came out. So, um, you know, it's just I think that the the that killer app um, before the beacons hasn't come to fruition. And so, you know, as it stands today, uh, there's they're fantastic for data. Uh, they're fantastic for um, you know particular messaging. But um, I think the promise of you know, this sort of real-time engagement, like I said, it, it, um, 
it's a little bit more difficult um, you know, to get your head around and your hands around. And from a, a content you know, and campaign management perspective, I think is, is the, the disconnect currently um, on it. But it doesn't mean that, you know, like I said, I think that there's still uh, a spot for it from a data perspective and to um, you know, uh, watch what's going on in, um, with your fans and the family. Absolutely. Engagement. Certainly a, a fascinating, fascinating topic and one that's so quickly evolving. You use Pokemon Go. Uh, I mean, I swear if we were going to have the conference next month, you know, I'd try to figure out how I could, how I could get Pikachu you know, appearing on the stage or something, so I get everybody with their phones trying to capture it. Um, but seriously, I mean, a lot of ball clubs. We just did a selling it story uh, on the Durham Bulls and a program that they were doing that was built around Pokemon Go. So the mobile technology is just so. Much, I mean, we were joking before the call started that you know, five years from now, if we go back and listen to this, we'll all be laughing because what's cutting edge today will just seem you know perfunctory. Uh, in two, three years, maybe even in six months. So thank you. I'm just curious now, um, in your findings and what you're doing, Brad, with your advertisers, is there any particular part, you know, for the guys that are listening out there, is there a specific moment, either pre-game, in-game, post-game, where the advertisers might have seen the most amount of engagement uh, from their ads with a given club? Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's it varies from advertiser and campaign to campaign. Um, you know, it it's really depends on the objective. And so, you know, for example, obviously, if you're on the ticketing side and and when you're doing the the marketing of the ticketing or marketing of the game, then pregame is your time, right? And we encourage again the geo targeting um, and the device targeting too. Um, we're running campaigns with a, a, a ticketing company right now where. Um, you know, we're looking at a uh, really narrow geofence within an hour of the game, and so you know, we're doing that game parting piece plus the mobile plus the geo, you know, because that's most likely where we'll be able to catch those last minute fans, right? So it's as you get closer to the game, drop your radius closer, and you know, go mobile only. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, those are the one. So you know, in terms of, but, and again, getting back to that mobile engagement, that's it's. You know, all engagements, mobile engagement, because at some point, you know that that person is cross-platform. It's going from desktop, or it's going from TV, or it's you know the, the fan is is you know hitting all those points. But um, you know we like to sort of pre-game, and like I said, as we get closer, and if the objective is to sell tickets, it's you know really focused, mobile only, and closer to the venue. Um, when you get into the post-game situation, you know we're doing threshold events with, um, for example, QSR that. Um, is is has a, traditionally is handed out coupons at the park, and you know their advancement this year was to start pushing out on the, the social um, channels, and you know but that's limited to your timeline and, and sometimes can get lost in the shuffle, and so you know we're targeting um, post based on post post game events, so it, you know there has to be a a win for that team um, and uh, or shutout and uh, or both and so that then triggers the delivery of the ads and so um, you know again it, it, it's I think that the thing about um, you know what the, right now currently you know you can actually segment your message and deliver content in in so many unique ways um, that it, it's really it's a, a up to the creative and, and from a brand particular, from a brand sponsor um, in particular, um, it's you know, really working with them on defining those objectives and um, and then you know building the campaign around that. Excellent. No, oh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was Brad Friedman, uh, the CEO and founder of FanServe. If you have any questions for Brad, you want to ask, uh, or even after off call offline here, uh, just go ahead and type the message in there. Uh, in the box that you can see there, and then we'll try to save a little open time uh, at the tail end of the call uh, if you want to ask any questions uh, to Brad or any of our panelists. Uh, next up is Chris Isles. Chris Isles is the Senior Director of Content uh, for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, I had the great good fortune to have been up to the ballpark at Target Field uh, back in May and saw what they were doing uh, and just doing a phenomenal job, their uh, MLB ballpark app. I know Chris is going to talk about several of these programs, including the ballpark app, uh, so not to steal any time, but just so that you know his background, uh, Chris oversees all the strategic development, the production, the implementation, uh, the execution of the digital and in-ballpark content for the Twins. He's been there since 2008. 
uh, certainly has more than a decade of public relations experience uh, that he brought to the table there, so uh, doing some award-winning campaigns. So he's overseen content development and communications perspective on behalf of both the advertisers, the sponsors, and the property, if you would. Uh, so a great person for us to tap into for this month. Uh, with that said, Chris, bring us up to speed on some of the programs that the twins are working with with mobile. Sure, sure, and um, I, I should start out the uh, my segment by by saying that uh, nothing that the Minnesota Twins do we do alone. Uh, we do all of this in partnership with our great partners at Major League Baseball, Advanced Media. So when I talk about things that the Twins are doing, we are one and the same with Major League Baseball, Advanced Media, and and certainly owe them a great deal of uh, of gratitude for their forward thinkingness in this area. Um, but let's go ahead and advance the slides here. Um, we. We currently have uh, four mobile apps that we're working with right now. Um, if you want to jump ahead one more here, um, which which sounds like like uh, quite a bit of apps, and it is a lot of apps, um, but each one of them serves a very specific uh, purpose that, that we think uh, forms a, a fairly significant lap, or app landscape that, that's good for fans. So if you take a look at our flagship app is on the left here, that's MLB.com's uh, at bat prop which is the highest grossing sports app of all time uh, on iPhone devices. It's, it's a great app. Pretty much the, the purpose that this one serves is it allow fans, allows fans to be connected with the game when they're away from the ballpark. Um, it's, it's somewhat of an extension of our website. Pretty much any information you want on the Minnesota Twins or any of the other 29 uh, MLB clubs, you can get through this at bat app. Uh, so that's the first one I'm going to touch on. I'm going to spend the most of the time talking about our ballpark app, uh, which the main function of that is to enhance the fan experience while they're actually at your facility. Um, so you'll, you'll see, you know, the, the at bat app has somewhere near uh, 20 million page views uh, year to date. Uh, the ballpark app, since you have to be at the stadium, or, or that's what it's designed for. Um, you know, we, we've got a, a smaller audience. These are people that are actually coming to our games. Arguably, our most engaged audience, people that we can interact with on a personal basis, but also that use the ballpark app to supplement their game day experience and really to facilitate uh, when they come to the ballpark. Um, moving down the line here, uh, you see the MLB.com Clubhouse app, uh, which is is a great app for uh, it, it's it's targeted towards a younger demographic, a demographic that's highly social, highly active on both platforms. I'll show you a little bit about what the content is in there. But essentially, that's made uh, content in fans' hands that's easily shareable with their own audiences, essentially giving young fans the ability to promote their love of the game, their love of the team, and uh, do promotion on behalf of the teams. Um, and then you'll see the final app there, the MLB Fans app. Uh, that's just a place where fans, uh, again, targeted towards a younger demographic where they can go and consume social media content in real time that's being discussed across social platforms. It kind of weeds out all other news and information and just focuses on either your favorite MLB team or MLB as a whole. So jumping forward here, um, I'll talk a little bit about the At Bat app, which is, is like I said, it's it's MLB's flagship app. Um, it's it's the most popular app, and, and as I said, for the seven years in a row, it's Sports app, um, across platforms. Uh, let's jump one slide ahead here. I'll talk a little bit about some of the functionality. Like I like I mentioned before, it's, it's essentially an extension of the team's website. Anything you want to do um, on our website can basically be done while you're on the go through this app. Um, you know, if you're looking at the, the panel on the left here, this is just a screen grab from my phone here. Um, you know, you, it's got you know where we're playing, when we're playing, who our next matchup is. Got uh, your latest news. You guys may have seen we, we released our uh, general manager last week when I was pulling this together. So you've got all your top stories there. Um, you know you've got different videos that you can go through, uh, highlights from the most recent game. You can buy tickets there. Obviously, hugely important. And then um, on the right here, it's you know essentially every anything you could ever want to know about an MLB team. Um, I should say this is this is the twin specific page within. The uh, the at bat app. So all 29 other teams have their own specific pages within there. Probably the most, uh, or definitely the most uh, important feature of this is if you look at the top um, of the of the bar there, you've got a little screen icon up there. The best thing that this app lets you do is to uh, watch 
in real time any MLB game that's that's going on. If you have an MLB.tv subscription, um, Major League Baseball Giants TV has been one of the leaders in live streaming. It's not the leader in live streaming uh, sports. Probably the, the best, most utilitarian piece of this app is being able to watch any MLB game that's taking place right on your phone. Um, in addition, uh, you see the audio um, icon at the top there. You can click that and you can get uh, uh, audio feeds from any game that's, that's going on as well. Let's jump to the next slide here. Um, a little bit about the Clubhouse app. Um, one more slide ahead. This is basically just a representation of some of the content that is customized by each team. You can see um, on the left we've got some some emoji stickers um, that are, are hugely popular with you know our younger fan base. Uh, if Eduardo uh, Nunez hits a home run, uh, you don't have to write out Eduardo Nunez. Uh, you know in your tweet you can just put a, an emoji of Eduardo Nunez's face here. So you know on the uh, on the left we've got you know Prince Santana, Glenn Perkins uh, Eddie Rosario and, and one of our, you know, historic legendary players, Kirby Puckett, as well as our, our Game of Law, which is kind of an iconic photo spot out on the Plaza, um, as well as the stadium. That's just a small example of the type of content that's in there. Uh, in addition, on the right, this is obviously a still presentation, but those are animated gifts that, uh, that fans can share with their friends that, um, you know, convey emotions. Uh, if they're really excited about something, they don't need to say they're excited about something. They can show the uh, gif of Eduardo Nunez sliding headfirst into home uh, and slamming his hands on the ground. Uh, let's jump ahead one more here. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Ballpark app, um, like I said, because it, it targets the audience that is most engaged with the brand. It's meant to be an enhancement to your experience at the Ballpark. We have a lot of uh, a lot of content within that app that's that's customizable um, at the team level. Um, so I mean, you'll see we're we're at almost two million page views uh, year to date in 2016 within this app. If you compare that to those previous numbers, we've seen a huge increase this year. And the primary reason for that is uh, we added some great functionality with the help of our friends from Major League Baseball Advanced Media, and that fans can now access their game tickets directly through. Similar to if you're boarding a Delta flight, um, you know, let, anyone who's embraced technology uh, these days basically hasn't seen a paper plane ticket in a number of years, and uh, we're getting into that realm where fans can uh, open up their their uh, app on the phone, and their game tickets are already within the app. They can use that phone to just scan into the ballpark. So. Um, this pie chart on the right gives you an idea of, of how fans are using the functionality with the app. They're coming to the target field page, they're landing on the home page, uh, they're pulling up their kits on the app, and then they're playing uh, Twingo, which is, is a game that we have created in an HTML5 game uh, that accompanies the game. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But I will say this pie chart looked a heck of a lot different last year before we uh, we had uh, you know a significant push to put tickets within the app. Let's jump ahead one slide. I'll, I'll talk about a little of the functionality of uh, what fans see in the ballpark app. Um, basically, you know, you, you navigate to your your home ballpark for our host, that's, that's Target Field. Uh, you, you see that our next event is today, Tuesday, July 26th. We're going to be facing the Braves. Um, you know, you scroll down a little bit, and there's there's a grid of, of various things that you can do, and then we try and put the most uh, popular items within that since they're the most easily navigable. Um, Twingo is, is like, I'll talk about that in a little bit. The sweet spot card is something that um, our season ticket holders use. All of our season ticket holders get the sweet spot card that gets them a uh, discount on, on food and beverages within the ballpark as well as merchandise. So similar to how they can access their tickets within the app, they can access that sweet spot card. A sweet spot card within there, and then some you know real utilitarian features. You've got your map and directory. You've got your concessions list. I don't have that. A, a very specific local signature item. I can find that super easily through the app. Um, we've got a points of interest program. Uh, we talked a little bit about iBeacons earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll jump into that a little bit more in a second here. Um, and then on the right here, you can see those, those are just some of the other things that live within the home page of the app that are all very functional, designed to make it really easy for a fan to get information on the ballpark uh, while they're there. So uh, let's jump ahead one slide here. Let's 
So this is this is essentially the tickets page. If I had tickets for tonight's game, those would just show up within there. Uh, since I don't have tickets, I can easily buy tickets. Or um, one of the other cool functionalities with the, within the app is if it's a special night and I want to upgrade my seats, I can do that through the app and, and pay a nominal fee to get upgraded seats. Another pretty cool aspect of it is this journal. <laughs> functionality, which you see to the right here. Um, fans can store their photos in uh, within the app, so they have a, an ongoing journal of and it, it spent at, uh, it's spent at the ballpark. Uh, it, it keeps track of all your check-ins, which are done through iBeacon. You can do it manually, or if, or if one of our iBeacon senses that you're entering the facility, it will automatically check you in. Uh, you can see I have 200 total check-ins, 210 total check-ins there, so I've seen a few baseball games at Target Field. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the specific items that we've customized within this app. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples uh, in there. So I'm going to head to the slide. I'm going to show you um, some of the stuff that we've done with iBeacons, uh, which uh, when we launched our iBeacon program in conjunction with uh, MLB Advanced Media, uh, we had ex essentially at that point what was the most extensive uh, iBeacon installation in the world. We did that in conjunction with the uh, 2014 All-Star Game when we were fortunate enough to host that here in Minneapolis. And so we had about 12 locations throughout the ballpark that we beaconed. So fans could essentially go through and do a self-guided tour. Uh, we'll see our most popular ones are our Target Plaza, which is just outside the ballpark gates, so you don't even need a game to visit that. Um, our digital clubhouse is an area that's accessible to all fans as well as the Town Ball Tavern. So uh, you, you can see that, uh, that you know, fans can actually, uh, they don't need to buy a tour at the ballpark. They can, they can do a self-guided tour and, and see some of these cool pieces of Twins memorabilia. As they, as they approach a, a beacon, information pops up on their phone that they can choose to click into if they want more information on it. Um, probably the coolest one we did is we've got an area here called the Rod Carew Atrium, um, which, which one of our premium areas. And as you enter the Rod Carew atrium, it would pop up a notification that you are in this atrium. Click here for more information. When you click on that, up pops a video of Rod Carew himself welcoming you to the atrium that is named after him at the Target Field and telling you a little bit about what goes on. Uh, let's jump ahead another slide here. Um, we were the, the first team in Major League Baseball to uh, have gaming within our app. And it was really important to us that the gaming that goes on within the app does not detract from what's happening on the field, but rather uh, enhances that experience. So the first game that we had was a game called Twins Quake, where uh, fans essentially asked what was going to happen when the Twins were at the plate in the bottom of the inning. You know, if they thought Joe Maurer was going to hit a double, they'd click double. Um, so at the beginning of the inning, they pick three events that they think were going to happen, and then you're awarded points based on of both of those happens. So uh, that, that was our first foray into it. Um, at, at this point, we've, we've played a game for about 20 years now called Twingo. Um, dates back to the Metrodome days where, uh, you know, it's basically a bingo card where there's different scoring plays that happen in baseball uh, that are represented on that card. And as, uh, as those things are happening, you're able to check those off on your uh, your bingo card, uh, you eventually can win prizes. So we this year, um, in place of that Twins at the Plate game, we decided to uh, go digital with bingo. As you saw from that earlier, it's the third most visited page within the app. If you look at it last year, it was the second most visited page. Um, so it's, it's definitely something that custom piece of content that's driving people to the app and is also enhancing the gameplay experience. Uh, next slide, please. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is something that we are doing this upcoming Friday. Uh, we haven't done it yet. It hasn't been done in Major League Baseball, so um, we're, we're hoping for great success. Um, we'll let you know how it goes. Uh, but basically, we're giving away 5,000 of those uh, those Google Cardboard viewers that you see uh, our, our eager intern Caleb wearing there. Um, uh, it's uh, obviously being presented by T-Mobile and also with our friends at Fox Sports North. So we're not only giving those away to give people kind of a taste into virtual reality, but we've also done a pretty significant content piece behind it where we partnered with uh, a company out of Los Angeles called Supersphere VR 
to shoot some really cool behind the scenes content that is only going to be available to fans at that game. Um, and it's going to be greatly enhanced when viewed through these uh, 360 virtual viewers. So I'm going to um, give you a peek at kind of behind the scenes of what that looks like. It's essentially a four minute video. I'm going to have all be run through these here. Um, but this is one of our pitchers, Trevor May. Um, he's kind of a, a tech guy. Uh, he, he, he likes technology a lot, so he was kind of a natural fit for this. But I mean, the video opens with him arriving in the, in the parking lot. Um, these videos or these images, I'll tell you, don't do it justice because remember this is meant to be viewed within a virtual viewer that you can look 360 degrees in. So he arrives at the parking lot, he welcomes, him, welcomes you into the Twins Clubhouse. Hey, here we are, come on into the clubhouse. Walks into the clubhouse, walks past uh, this, this lead wall here, uh, you know, right the fourth wall, addresses the camera. And that red area there represents the actual field of view within within this. So um, fans have to look around to see those trophy cases behind them, and it gives them the chance to explore the clubhouse. He walks into the clubhouse. This is a zoomed-in view. That's Tory Hunter there, uh, who you know randomly is happens to be there and and is you know addressing you as the viewer. It actually feels like you're within the clubhouse. If you zoom out, that's all the other stuff that is in that shot that you can explore. You can see you know Eduardo Nunez sitting in the black background there. You can see guys uh, playing cards on the other side. So for our fans who will never get to actually step foot in the clubhouse, this gives them. The opportunity to not only be greeted by one of the Twins fans, Tori Hunter, but to take a look around the clubhouse and have a little taste of what our players see every day. Um, this is on our bullpen, and this is uh, one of our, our bullpen pitchers, uh, Tyler Duffy. Um, he's throwing a little bullpen session to get warmed up for the game. Uh, the camera puts you, you know, right there with him <coughs> as he's throwing it. And then uh, this one here puts you almost in the batter's box. So when you look at this one from the 360 viewer, you can almost feel like you are standing in the batter's box facing live MLB pitching, uh, which is you know it's not something all of you to experience except for through this. Uh, Trevor May then takes the fans out onto the field for uh, batting practice, uh, where we meet Brian Dozier, who's one of our fan favorites here uh, throughout the. Batting practice, Miguel Sano, who's one of our bigger sluggers, is is ripping him out of the ballpark. And then uh, and then Trevor May says, all right, we're done warming up. It's game time. Let's go. And so then uh, from there, fans get a, a look into the game that, that you essentially never would get to see. I mean, you're, you're standing on the field with the grounds crew as they're painting the lines, which is, um, is, is something that you don't usually get to see. Throughout the course of the game, we had the the camera in the bolt or in the dugout with the guys. It's it's kind of tough to see on here, but um, you're standing next to uh, Paul Molitor uh, as, as the game is going on. So you, it, it's uh, kind of a fast motion of the game happening, watching a few select hits standing right next to uh, Paul Molitor. And then we we put up uh, kind of a bird's eye view from uh, this is what's called Mini and Paul's, which is a, a real popular bar restaurant area within the ballpark. And uh, at the end of the game, Trevor May says it's fun. You don't got to go home, but you can't stay here, and uh, and sends you off on your way. So that uh, it's it's totally experimental. Um, it's going to live within the ballpark app. Uh, as fans go into the app, they'll click that VR video button on the top left there, uh, which will pop up a, a video that they can view either in 360 mode, which is as if you've ever seen a 360 video on Facebook. That's what that is. You can you can scroll around 360 degrees, or they can uh, they can transition it over to what you see on the right here, which is called Google Magic Window Mode, which is meant to interact with uh, a Google Cardboard device and make it look like a completely immersive experience once your phone is dropped into this cardboard device. So fans will go in there, they click the video, they pop their phone into this Twins 360 virtual viewer, and then uh, hopefully they'll think it's super cool and uh, and if we go to the next slide here, they'll probably have a similar reaction to uh, eager intern. <laughs> and, uh, and it'll be awesome. Um, but that's, that's just an example of a few things that we're, that we're doing, a few technical things to, uh, to get fans excited about our apps and to drive traffic. Uh, oh, I think that's, that's great, Chris. Thank you so very, very much. Dying to hear, like you said, that'll be this uh, – this Friday, so I'm very much looking forward to hearing uh, what the response is uh, from the fans to the Twins 360 virtual viewer. Uh, I, I know I got a chance to look at one of these about a month ago, 
uh, and it's just an outstanding experience. I can see clubs, you know, jumping on something like this in the months to come. So uh, if people have questions or certainly want to reach out, uh, by all means, reach out to Chris. Uh, Albie will connect you. Uh, you can just send him an email or something. But uh, terrific program, and as you guys can see, it's one of the reasons why we're so much looking forward uh, to bringing this year's Budweiser Gala to the Twins at Target Field. Uh, they're going to be our host this year when we bring the forum up there. For those of you that have not been to the forum and wondering what this is, uh, it's a conference very much like what we're having today for an hour. We're, we're getting together discussing best practices, uh, programs that make the most sense, uh, even the things that aren't working, I mean, it would be great to be there because you can even follow up with Chris afterwards and find out, all right, if you were to do this again, what would you do differently? How would you change this? How did the sponsors get engaged in something like this? Uh, because this is very much the direction that we're all headed uh, where it comes to fan engagement, fan entertainment. It can't just be about nine innings of baseball. It's about the entire package, which is something I think that all of our panelists are talking about today. Uh, so shameless shill here. As we head to the end of July, uh, this is our Super Summer Special. Uh, so by all means, you know, take advantage of the discount pricing. It certainly won't get any lower than it is right now to come to the forum. Uh, stop by our, our website at sports-forum.com. Get a chance to come out to Minneapolis uh, and St. Paul. Get a chance to meet Chris. See for yourself. Take a, you'll take an actual tour around the ballpark, but it's great to see it virtually here as well. Uh, and so thank you so very much. And we're going to wrap up this month uh, with, with an old friend of the forum, and really not that old. He's been with the forum since 2014, but uh, our next panelist uh, is John Durbin, who's the director of marketing for Pagula Sports and Entertainment. John, many of you have met before. I know he actually came to the forum as a Case Cup student back when he was at the University of Oregon. So he's one of our first Case Cup students who has now not only progressed from being on a webinar, but he's actually on our steering committee. Uh, he might be the first Case Cup student to actually be on the steering committee of the National Sports Forum. He was kind enough to join us this year as we're getting ready to go to Minneapolis-St. Paul and uh, be hosted by Chris and the Twins. Very much looking forward to that. But John has been with us 14, 15, and 16, uh, and just doing a great job at Pagula. Uh, he currently oversees all the marketing efforts uh, for all the Pagula sports properties, which includes the Buffalo Sabres, the Buffalo Bandits of the NLL, the Rochester Americans of the AHL, uh, and the Bu My One Buffalo Fan Engagement Program, which I've asked him to be sure to talk to us all about here, MSG Western New York, and all of the brands that reside within the mixed-use facility, uh, which is called the Harbor Center, uh, which would also include the 716 Food and Sport, Academy of Hockey, Impact Sport Performance, and the Rinks, which makes him very common to all of us that are on uh, the call today that are with teams and properties. Uh, you know, we're using our facilities for a multitude of, of purposes, uh, activities, actions, programs, concerts, you name it. Uh, but certainly, uh, uh, he, you know, John oversees all of this, uh, and, and so we're looking forward to getting an update from John as to what they're doing up in Buffalo, certainly where it involves uh, mobile engagement. So with that said, John, I'm going to turn the floor over to you, my friend. Thanks, Ron. I need to bring you everywhere I go. That's probably one of the better introductions I've received, so uh, <laughs> don't be surprised if I ask you to, to record I'll that. I'll send you the bill. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, as Ron alluded to, we have a lot of brands here at Pagula Sport and Entertainment, and actually we can uh, go ahead and jump in, Albie. Um, if you go to actually the next slide, I'm going to talk about My One Buffalo, but just to give a little bit of history in terms of how we came to be as an organization, we're actually only officially two years old. Um, Pagula Sport and Entertainment became a company uh, in 2014. Uh, however, it kind of has its origins back in 2010 when our ownership group, um, as a side business, opened up a recording studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and a sport performance uh, company for elite athletes in Florida. In 2011, they bought the Bills and the Bandits, both play in the first Niagara Center, and then the Americans of the AHL. And then it was in 2014 with the purchase of the Bills and the opening up of Harbor Center where they really, uh, our ownership group really looked around to find some more efficiencies across the board. And really, ever since 2014, when we had all these properties coming online, the big thing that we've been trying to do is find a way to link them all together. Um, as you can see on this slide, there's a, an awful lot of brands that we have to look after and ensure the health of. So what has been our goal since, uh, since 2014 is to really uh, link those things and find as many efficiencies as we possibly can. Uh, and if you jump to the next slide, Albie. 
And that's actually really the, the beginning of One Buffalo. Um, you know, after the purchase of the Bills with stable ownership for both the Bills and Sabres, uh, we really wanted to find a way to unite the community around these teams. So we launched One Buffalo, which was, uh, as, uh, as our EVP of marketing described it, let's just put it out there and see what happens. Um, and the fans really glommed onto it in, in a way that we really could not have anticipated. Um, it became a great rallying cry. Um, it became a point of civic pride for people here in Buffalo. Um, you know, it's something that we've actually been able to leverage through partnerships. There's a One Buffalo beer uh, here brewed by Southern Tier Brewing. There's an ice cream flavor now uh, created by Perry's, which is a local ice cream manufacturer. So, you know, this was really our first step into actually getting all of these things to be able to be talked about in one breath. Um, so then I guess we can get into kind of how this has evolved into a mobile app um, over time. So on the next slide, um, you can see, you know, we, we started this project called Transforming the Fan Experience. So um, really we set out to, to answer a few questions. The first is how do we make it feel like anytime you're in one of our properties that you're in one of our properties, that it's a shared experience, that it's something where whether you're at a Bills game or a Bandits game or a Sabres game or at an open skate at the rinks and Harbor Center, that, that you're a part, of, uh, a part of our properties and part of this brand. And along with that, we also wanted to make the fan experience just better, quite honestly, um, and leveraging technology for that. Uh, the way I like to describe it is we want our fans, when they come into our buildings for a game, that they don't feel like there's another fan in the building until they want to slap a high five with somebody after a goal or a touchdown. So when they're walking the concourse, there's nobody in their way. There's nobody holding them up in a bathroom line. There's nobody holding them up at concessions. They can get in and out with a merchandise purchase like you know they're essentially watching at home. Uh, the other long-term goal with this in terms of our mobile strategy is we want our fans to be able to show up at one of our venues with nothing but their mobile phone, and that's all they need. So ticketing is on there, their e-wallet and payment methods are on there, um, there's maps, uh, anything that they could possibly need resides in this one device. And then finally, selfishly for us, um, we had a lot of different data points across all these different properties and systems that we run in our different buildings. So we wanted to give them one place to funnel all the information to, that we can start to leverage that to better communicate with our fans, better understand our fan tendencies and what they care about and what they're doing. So that is how we got to drum roll. Oh wait, nope, I jumped the gun, sorry. Um, so one of the challenges that we have here is, you know, we've got the, the stadium that was opened in 1973, an arena that was opened in 1996, and this Harbor Center facility opened in 2015. All of them are extremely different buildings with a lot of different needs and uh, tech infrastructure. Um, so now we're ready to get into the next slide, which is My One Buffalo. Um, so this is a, it's, it's a mobile app, but it's a bit more than that um, because it really has a lot of facets to it. Um, and the goal here, again, is that if you have this app, you know, we have united all the companies under One, Buff one Buffalo. Um, and so we essentially have three different things that we're putting in the marketplace. The Sabres app, which will have One Buffalo as part, My One Buffalo as part of it. The Bills app, which will have My One Buffalo as part of it. And then a standalone My One Buffalo app. So one of the other issues that we're running into quite a bit is that we had too many apps in the marketplace where, you know, we just on the Sabres side this past season, we were trying to get people to download three different apps between our team app, which was mostly content, uh, we had a, a kid-focused app called Club Sabers, and then we had a rewards program app called Sabers Fan Advantage. And we were just putting too many messages in the marketplace for really, after we looked at it, no good reason. Um, there was no reason we couldn't combine everything into one place so that we're not asking our fans to download a multitude of different things, but we're asking them to download one thing and that we can put all of our features into this one app, um, and it's built in a way that we can evolve it and keep adding more to it. Um, so this program will actually launch in September 2016 within the Bills app, uh, and then in October and November, the other two variations of this will, will uh, begin. Next slide. Oh, perfect. And there's three key components of this, which I'll get into, my status, my tickets, my game day. Um, so actually, we can just jump into the next slide. So the status of My One Buffalo. So what this is, it's our variation on a loyalty or a rewards program. So as mentioned, we had a rewards program the last two seasons for the Sabres. Um, we learned a lot from it, and it worked as most of these programs do, where 
if you take an action, we give you points, and then you can redeem those points in some sort of store um, for merchandise. And you know, after kind of looking at our fans and the overhead and a lot of different factors that went into that, we decided to drift away from that and make two fundamental changes. The first is that we got rid of the points, um, points as currency approach. So what we would do now is put people into different status levels based on how they interact with us. And then from there, we can offer ongoing things like a discount in the Sabre store, a discount in the Bill store, but also taking a more surprise and delight mentality to giving things to people. So rather than them saying, hey, I want to use X amount of points on a jersey, uh, you know, we can go to different tiers and say, hey, you've been a good fan, here's a jersey. Um, I know it seems like kind of a subtle, uh, subtle difference, um, but you know, for us, when we explored this, it just seemed like we had a lot more options in terms of what we can offer people. Um, and it is, frankly, a better way to get our partners involved uh, in this program. And then the second big change that we're making is automating all of the actions that are taken. So previously, if you came to a game, after your usher scanned your ticket, you would have to then take out your phone, scan your ticket, and then you would get points. So what we're doing now is we're completely automating that process by just tying the ticket scan to your email. So that's one way we could get credit. But we've also put iBeacons throughout all of our buildings so that if, say, for example, you're on the 300 level uh, on the night of a Sabres game, there's one of two ways you got there. Either one, you had a ticket to the game and you're in there, or two, you broke in. Um, and either way, I'm impressed and I want to reward you for that and, and what you've done. And you know we're really leveraging tech across the board to take advantage of this automation. So we used to do uh, keywords in our broadcast that people could type in to get points. What we're doing now is we partnered with Listener, which does inaudible tones. So they'll actually send out a tone during a broadcast. As long as you've allowed us access to your microphone, we will give you credit for watching the game. It's also allowed us ways to incorporate away games, which is huge for our away fans. So if you go to an opposing building, we can draw a, a geo fence around it. And as long as you've got your location services on, we'll give you credit for attending that away game. Um, or even if we have bar watch parties in different cities, different things like that. So it's a much more streamlined process. Uh, and then the next uh, portion of this is the in-venue experience. You know, we, we've touched on this. Uh, Chris touched on this uh, a bit. And, you know, we're in a very similar boat where we're trying to go full on with digital ticketing. Um, you know, we'll have an e-wallet, hopefully a fully functional e-wallet that can be used to merch this year and then concessions at some point in the future. Um, we've got wayfinding maps throughout the bin building where people can use um, traffic and parking tools. You know, we've actually really leveraged our partnerships with this. So um, just a quick example, there's a local government agency that does all of the traffic updates um, and border wait times, because um, we're right by Canada, uh, border wait times and what we've done is partnered with them and they've just given us access to their app to just drop it straight into ours. So again, we're not asking people to download their app to find out what the traffic updates are. It's actually within hours. So as soon as you wake up in the morning on a game day and you're starting to prep to go to the game, we want people to start interacting with this app to streamline, streamline their process of getting to, in, and around, and through the building. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, and I, I've touched on a lot of these. You know, in Venue, we're really trying to use the beacons and geofences and proximity marketing to kind of hit people with messaging. Um, you know, our biggest challenge is going to be being disciplined and not bombarding people with, you know, 30 offers a day, um, but really being selective in how we do it and really thinking about who do we want to hit with a message and when and where. Uh, and then out of Venue opportunities, you know, we, we talked about this a bit. You know, one, one of the things for us that, that we kind of looked around and realized we were doing a little bit of a, a disservice to were our, our, our uh, displaced fans. So fans who don't live in the area that um, you know, are still diehard fans, want to be interacting with the team, what are we doing for them? So that was really our goal with this, is try to develop a program that, that can serve their needs as well and allow them to participate. Go to the next slide. So this, th these next three slides I can kind of fly through. And actually, Albie, if you want to jump ahead a couple slides um, to the one with the, yeah, so there's a lot of the different data points we were getting information from. So if you get on the next slide, what we did as a first step was kind of categorize them into experiential, transactional, consumption, interactive, and behavioral um, to go to the next slide. Um, and what that does then is it gives us a single view of the fans. So 
again, we're feeding all of these pieces of information into one place, and then we can make decisions on what gets incorporated into our CRM um, and what we can leverage to, frankly, work smarter. Um, so, you know, this isn't just for the fans and, and their benefit. It's for us to better, better understand our fan base and what they're doing and everything uh, that they're after. So we can go to the next slide. Yeah, and, I, you know, I've touched on, on all of these. Um, you know, it just gives us a, a better experience for our fans, um, a better experience for, you know, really everybody involved in it. And it gives us something to point to, and it's a, a huge marketing push for us in the upcoming year. All right. No, that was awesome. If I can cut in, John, uh, thank you so very much. I mean, you guys can see why uh, we've got John in our eye here and the, the I was going to say, all of Padula Sports uh, and the job that they're doing. Let us know. I always love, love listening about this, and I don't know. I, I'd love to hear from you guys that are part of the call this month uh, to see if you'd like to see if we can put John, John to work. Uh, doing a breakout session in Minneapolis where he really, you know, takes an hour to take us inside what they're doing here because this is great technology. I love how you guys are breaking this down and, you know, we can't do near enough, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, near enough justice uh, to the great work that they're doing here on a 15-minute call, uh, giving him 15 minutes to, to kind of explain it. But it would be great to have him uh, take some time to break this down. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you if, uh, if you'd love to hear that. Uh, questions and things that you might have that you want to ask to any of our panelists today, Brad, Chris, or John, uh, by all means, uh, send Albie a, uh, a, a hit with an email on that, and he'll connect you up with each of our speakers here. We had great overviews. You can see there's some similarity. They're using technology together, but they're all going off in different directions as well, and uh, we're fascinated by where this whole industry is going. Uh, so, But we've reached the top of the hour, and we want to thank all of you for sitting in and being a part of this and listening to it. Again, we want to encourage you to take advantage of the Super Summer Special. We'd love to see you out in Minneapolis, St. Paul, coming up in February. Uh, we're going to be February 12th, 13th, and 14th. To learn more about the forum, go to sports-forum.com. And for any of you that are interested in submitting to run a breakout session, by all means, I think you have until August 15th to turn in your speaker request app. We'd love to take a look at what you'd like to talk about at the forum uh, because this is really of the industry, by the industry, and for the industry. So we thank all of you guys for joining us. Any questions that you might have, sports-forum.com. Uh, but let me take this opportunity again to thank Brad Friedman, uh, the CEO and founder of FanServe, Chris Isles, for Senior Director of Content for the Minnesota Twins, and of course our wrap-up speaker here, John Durbin, Director of Marketing for Pagula Sports and Entertainment, and certainly to thank all of you for being a part of this month's call. Uh, we'll talk to you again in August, which will be just a few short weeks or days away from here, and we'll look forward to being a part of this again. Again, everybody, have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll talk to you next month. Bye-bye now.